Hello YouTube, this is an alcohol review of Green River Kentucky Street Bourbon Whiskey. Nice bottle. Impressions, I guess. I can't figure what the heck that's called. It's not an indentation, it stands out. It's not an glazing, it's not... I gotta figure out what that's called. They've seen it on many, 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 many different bottles that they just had to put an extra oomph into their uh, packaging. It's nice. That fr that flat front, I think, goes well. Makes it stand out. The copper uh, ink. I think you guys could have saved your money. Done something different. That copper does not help you read any better. and doesn't make it stand out on the shelf any more than anything else. If anything, it's distracting in the back. But, in my opinion, take it or leave it. Doesn't really matter. According to the label, uh, it's a straight bourbon whiskey sour mash. Uh, non chill filtered. 45% alcohol by volume, 90 proof, 750 mils. If you're curious about the sour mash, what they do is is early in the process when it's pretty much throwing in the mash bill into great big tanks that uh, is filled with uh, the water and the yeast, and yeast starts doing its, its fermentation. It's chewing all the, the starches, the sugars, the, the whole bit starts to go. Then, <coughs> pardon me. They then take some of that mash, which is this giant vat of soup. They take a little of that soup, the mash, and save it. Then, once it goes through the entire process, they take it from there, they drain those tanks, go into other tanks, then they do, then and off it goes. But it's processing. When you're about ready to start a new batch, they take what they took from the old stuff that they put off to the side and then pour that into the new stuff to help start it. The hope is to get the new stuff to be closer flavored to the old stuff, creating a much more consistent product. Does it work? Eh, some say that it does, some say it doesn't. The problem with dealing with organics, such as wines and beers and everything else where your ingredients change through the year. After all, you can have one year where there's a whole lot of rain that comes in and affects the corn one way. And then not enough rain comes in. And that will affect the corn in, in the mash bill, obviously. It will affect the corn and have a slightly different flavor. It really varies. That's why you always see these guys when they do uh, wine. And they're so big, oh, the year, blah, blah, blah. Such a good year for... And it's because of that factor. Was the weather right? Was the rains right? Was the temperatures right? And all this helps affect the end product. Even though, <coughs> excuse me again, the process is the same. We're close to duplicating of the process from batch to batch to batch to batch to batch. So sour mash is an attempt, and you can, depending on whoever you talk to, depends on how well the attempt is to match flavors between batches. Nothing really all that interesting on the back, just a little blurb here, kind of whiskey without regrets. Green River, Kentucky, straight bourbon whiskey, proudly crafted inside the walls of Owensboro, Kentucky. <coughs> yeah, so there you go. Let's wrap onto it. We have ourselves a wooden cap, logo on top, part of seal. It is crushed uh, cork, mix it up. Long story behind that, won't bore you with it right now. The working Karen here, cork it. It's another critter, knock it over. And there we go. 
Yeah, it's a critter watch when I'm over at the missus. My place, not so many critters. Kind of sad. But it is a nice caramel with heavy yellow influence into it. Do our swirl here. Now, I had always felt, because when you do this world, you do this for, for two, two separate reasons. One the visual, one for the nose. The visual, then, when you do the squirrel, it brings up the side of the glass, and you stop, it starts to drop, and it starts getting these crags, these runs. These are called tearing or legging. Now, this is due to the thickness of the solution. I felt it was due to sugars. The more sugar left left in solution makes it a thicker deal. <clears throat> Thus, uh, it sticks longer, and as soon as it starts to break and come down, due to gravity, you know that there's more or less uh, sugar into it. Because now it's much more of a more or less thick mouthfeel, a syrupy or more watery, depending on how it goes. It's a visual cue onto that. I have been informed that I maybe have been mistaken and that it is not due to sugars but it's due to residual oils left into it and that the sugars are often uh, stripped out due to the distillation process. My problem with this is that should not also the oils be stripped out as well because during the distillation process the finer the solution, your end solution is, the higher it goes up. These uh, tall stacks, these distillation columns, if you will. And what's left behind is thicker, which means it's full of particulates and other contaminants. Well, oil is a contaminant. It's separate from water, as well as a sugar is the same way. So in my investigations, I, I haven't found the reasons why, at least not a satisfactory, from my opinion, why the legging, is it the oil, because, like I said, a, a wonderful fan out there, thank you very much for bringing it to my attention, uh, mentions about the reason for the oil and causing the cragginess is that it shows more or less oil in the solution, and that creates a much more complex or not as complex um, end product. Well, for all of those, it could be either or, or it could be a combination. It's, I'm still, I'm investigating. One must always keep learning. No matter how much gray is in there, they must always keep learning. So, either argument, there is a lot of legging, a lot of tearing coming down. It smells like lemons and oranges with a bit of a, uh, a alcohol sting to it. And a little bit, little bit of caramel thrown in the background, but there is a, um, a, a bit of a, an alcohol bite to it. It's just funny because you, you can tell that just by the fact that it's biting the inside of my nose rather than sipping it and biting my tongue. God, I love Glencairn glasses. They help you out so much when it falls out, comes in, that it helps, takes all those odors and focuses it. So, yeah. Oh, my patients run thin with loud mufflers in the background. One of the problems living in the sticks. But I digress. It is lemony. It is orangey. It has stone fruit. It has um, orange peel. Burnt orange peel. It wants to bite you. It wants to burn you. There's the ethanol burnt tire hiding in the background. It is definitely not hiding 
it's 45 percent alcohol by volume and that 90 proof is not hiding I've come across some some whiskey, some bourbons that they claim is 90 proof and you're like, really? It tastes like soda. This is not hiding it. There's a little interference with some of, the, some of the more delicate flavors. There are I would like to say there are layers to it. But even the layers are even kind of hard to tell. It does. It wants. It wants to mash itself together, but it presents itself in a set format. I mean, like uh, with, with other whiskeys, you can take a sip of it, and it's literally layered out for you. You taste the whatever first, and then as that fades, you get a different flavor that kind of comes in. And when that fades, you get another one. It's beautiful layered out. In this case, it's like a mush of flavors. And as the mush kind of changes it in your mouth, it starts, you get other, it starts to present different sides, different layers and there's layers again. Different flavors that kind of come out in this mush. Think, think having a, think having a uh, taste of cookie dough in your mouth. That's got other things like, like chocolate chip cookie dough. There you go. Uh, you, you take one sip of it. One sip of it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just screwing this up. You take one taste of it, and as the cookie dough kind of dissolves in your mouth. Sometimes you get more chocolate. You try another spoonful of cookie dough, sometimes you get less chocolate. It all depends on the spoonful of cookie dough, but it presents in different angles. <coughs> it's still the same thing. You still got your vanilla and your chocolate and your other cookie dough flavors, but each sip is different in how well it presents it and how strong it presents what. This is very similar to that. I can't call it layers because layers is almost like they're standing in line, each flavor trying to present itself to you. This is more like, you know, there's no line. It's just a mob of flavor. And whatever happens to be in your face is in your face. And then off it goes and here comes the next one. And not done in a nice orderly manner. Is that a bad thing? Not really. Because the flavor profile does not change. Just one sip, you get a little bit more lemon than orange, and the next sip, you get a bit more, I hit of more caramel than, 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 than the lemon. And it's all very predictable. It's just, it's more of a, a ball than a line. If that makes any sense. Now, this is strong enough that I would have to say it'd be best in a cocktail. Because of all those delicate flavors that come in, and they are they're quite delicate, even though it's it's a, a mob. Putting it into a cocktail I think will ruin all that. I don't think you're gonna gain anything really positive by putting into a cocktail other than softening all those hard alcohol levels. That 90 proof really wants to grab you by the nostril and drag you around the room and not in a fun way. So keep that in mind. I would say drop in an ice cube because that usually shaves off the, the harsh edges. The problem with putting in an ice cube is that it tends to muddy out all those delicate layers of flavors. And this guy has got such a disorganized version of that you can easily muddy out what it wants to present to you and you're not really helping yourself out give it a try see what you guys think it's green river kentucky straight bourbon whiskey sour mash 
Any comments about this particular product down below be warmly accepted as always, or better yet, go out, buy it, try it yourself. And let the rest of us in the YouTube Spirits community know your thoughts on Green River. It's maybe maybe it has present better character than to uh, some of you than it does to my palate. But don't know. We shall see. Be interested in hear what you guys have to say. Until next time, keep on drinking.